Mucklet Douglas Bartholomew Original Esquire the fourth here, and although I play a lot of games, I rarely help promote any. And no, this isn't sponsored. If you've ever wondered what the love child of StarCraft, Factorio, Diablo, Mindustry, Command & Conquer, and Bloons would look like, well, that's really weird and quite strange, honestly, but the answer is the Riftbreaker. This is a game I truly believe in and want to show you what it's about. In the Riftbreaker, you take on the role of Ashley, pilot of a mech fondly known as Mr. Mr. Riggs. In this future, mankind is in need of more resources. It uses vast amounts of power, teleporting these Rift Breakers far away onto planets with materials they need. The Rift Breaker's job is to then use the resources found on the target planet to construct the other half of a Rift Station, connecting a permanent portal back to Earth, which is the win condition. However, unfortunately for Ashley, this planet is inhabited by the Zerg. I mean, hostile native wildlife. And all the ruckus she is making keeps attracting them. You will need to gather resources, build up a base, climb the tech tree, and stay alive until you can build the Rift Station. However, as it often is, the devil is in the details. You start off by building a headquarters. You respawn here if Mr. Riggs gets destroyed, and if the HQ gets destroyed, you lose. WASD to move around, the mouse cursor aims. Left and right click will control your left and right hands. From there, you work on resource gathering. Mr. Riggs can mine himself, but like in Factorio, you want to automate this as soon as you can. Get some mining facilities online on some resource deposits and tend to your power needs. Over the course of the game, you can gain power by burning mined material, solar, which is very effective, but of course only during the daytime, wind, geothermal, gas power, nuclear, fusion, burning plants, burning biomass, which is killed enemies, magma, and much more. You can also make storages to help balance peaks and deficits of power, such as using tons of solar panels in a desert region and then using stored energy to survive the nights. I quickly noticed the controls are extremely smooth here. You can use the build menus, or you can use the C key to build the most basic wall, X the most basic tower, F to sell, G to upgrade, R to repair, Z to run a power line, and you can change any of these. Also, the other structures you can assign hotkeys to as well if you use them frequently frequently so you don't have to use the building menus, but just about everything I might need to slam down in a pinch or in an emergency is only a click away. The way the buildings construct reminds me of Command and Conquer's unfolding buildings combined with total annihilation's nano lathing. Let's talk combat. The next building you build is the armory, which slowly restocks ammunition that you use. You have melee attacks you can use indefinitely, but anything with ammo is restocked faster if you build more armories or level them up. You don't build more units or armies in this like other real-time strategy games, but you can make automated defenses and customize Mr. Riggs himself with dozens of weapons. You can use swords, spears, hammers, bare metal fists, machine guns, mini guns, floating mines, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, sniper rifles, shotguns, plasma rifles, flamethrowers, acid throwers, rail guns, lasers, mines, cryo guns, swarm missiles, mini nuke launchers, and much more. You can customize all of these weapons with various modules, choose various upgrades for Mr. Riggs himself, use a variety of them, or stack one type if you prefer. For defensive towers, we have sentinel towers that run on power instead of ammunition, long-range artillery, flamethrowers, miniguns, rocket launchers, repair drones, mine layers, attack drones, and much more. Each using various types of ammunition that is restocked by your factories, and don't skimp on the factories. If a fight drags on too long, your buildings that require ammo can run out of it. You can use your own weapon mods on the towers themselves to customize them if you want to go extra hard. As you mine out different areas, you will need to expand to new ones, forcing your base to grow each time to protect the new resource deposits. Your power lines in this game connect the bases, but I've learned to have power storage in each base in case the power line gets cut during a fight and all the guns get shut down. You can place small portals at places of interest, allowing you to rapidly rift jump between bases in case of an attack. Additionally, in campaign mode, you will build an orbital scanner, a building which allows you to warp to other locations on the planet to find the rare resources you need to complete your final final objective, taking you to many different biomes in search of titanium, palladium, uranium, and other rarities. Each biome has its own strengths and weaknesses, such as solar being very effective in the desert, but you need backups for nighttime, the volcanic area having an abundance of geothermal and magma, but solar and wind are weakened from the ash in the air, and a scary variety of monsters in every region as well. This game also has very impressive Twitch integration for those that like to broadcast or watch, allowing your audience to vote on things to happen in the game positively or negative. I myself have done multiple streamer versus chat challenges
areas where I fight the bugs and do everything in my power to survive chat as well. If any of this sounds like something you'd like to try, it also has a free copy of the Rift Breaker Prologue on Steam. You can try out the game and play the first level at no charge to see if you enjoy it risk-free. All in all, I have grown to absolutely love this game. It is one of the smoothest, funnest, most polished titles I've played this year, and I wanted to shout it out in its first expansion, Metal Terror, is scheduled to be out soon and may even be out by the time we're done editing this video. Once again, this video is not sponsored, but if I've possibly convinced you to pick up the Rift Breaker and tackle it for yourself, please consider using the Nexus referral link down below. Any games purchased on Nexus are still added to your Steam account. It is not another launcher. It simply supports a content creator when picking up games and is the same price outside of sales. If you'd like to see more gameplay of the Rift Breaker, I've linked multiple playlists in the description down below of my own adventures through this alien world. I hope you enjoyed as much as I have.